Well, Gamescon 2024 is officially in the books, and with it, we saw a lot of games. Some surprise announcements, a lot of new gameplay, a lot of new trailers, and a lot of release dates, with a lot of them being in 2025 to be specific. Funny enough, everyone knows one of the most anticipated games of all time, GTA 6, is also coming out in 2025. Bad luck, I guess. Now, I'm not surprised that publishers are releasing their games in the same year as Rockstar's Behemoth, but it is interesting the number of bigger games we have scheduled for a 2025 release. We have Monster Hunter Wildlands, Borderlands 4, Four, Civ 7, Death Stranding 2, Doom the Dark Ages, the new Indiana Jones game, and potentially a new Mafia game, just to name a few. These are big IPs with pretty big fan bases. Now I believe these games definitely don't have the same hype that GTA 6 does, but I'm wondering with so many games scheduled for 2025, what is their release window going to look like? Now the anticipated release date for GTA 6 is sometime in fall of 2025. Pending any potential delays, please god no Rockstar. Now I don't know if you know, but that's prime video game release in time. It has me wondering if some of these publishers aren't worried about competing with GTA 6. We recently got Ubisoft CEO saying they aren't looking to avoid releasing around GTA 6 as he believes there will be a rising tide effect in the gaming industry. Look who's back! in which game sales will see a big boost. I think that's true, but I believe that boost will be solely in Rockstar's favor. That's right. Regardless of how you look at it, when you have so many games coming out in a competitive time period where consumers are weighing their options now more than ever, somebody is going to lose. And with GTA 6, the anticipated release week sales projections is in the billions. So that somebody is not Rockstar. <laughs> Now, I'm no genius, but with the ever-rising cost of games these days and the economy being pretty unstable, I'm not too sure if people are going to grab a few $70 games to go with their GTA 6 purchase like it's a f***ing candy bar at the register. But hey, what do I know? Now, bigger titles causing developers to change their release dates is nothing new. GTA 5 had this effect on the gaming industry in 2013, and in fact, in 2017, Ubisoft's CFO said they were happy Red Dead Redemption 2 was delayed as it meant their titles that year would likely sell better as a result. So why the change in tune now? I also started to wonder if GTA 6 is secured to win game of the year. I mean, it's definitely my most anticipated game and most likely will be my game of the year, but it wouldn't be the first time that Rockstar released a highly anticipated open world crime game only to not win the coveted Jeff Keighley Glazing Award. That's right, good old Red Dead Redemption 2 lost out to God of War. <laughs> And I know what you're thinking, who cares? It's not like winning game of the year means one game is better, and I agree, but I think there's more monetary implications than you might think. The ability to put game of the year on advertisements and the cover art of your game means more money and recognition. Plus, the amount of people watching the game awards, seeing your game crowned best of the year means some might just be swayed to give your game a chance if they weren't already. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what these game award shows are, a bunch of ads about video games. Now, just looking into some info about the sales of 2018's God of War, we see it's drastically the highest selling game in the series, and it went from 5 million units sold its first month of release to almost 20 million by August 21st of 2021. Real boy. Now, is this a result of God of War winning Game of the Year? I don't know, but I doubt it hurts. It's a common theme among games to win Game of the Year. They often sell really well. Now, I know you're probably also saying, Cave, GTA 6 doesn't need no damn Game of the Year award to sell. It's going to break sales records regardless. And I 100% agree. But what has our 10 plus years of Rockstar milking GTA 5 re-releases and enhanced shark cards taught us? They love money. They love that sweet, sweet money. And if winning Game of the Year might get them even more profit, you best believe Strauss Zelnick is foaming at the mouth for it. Now, all of that to get back to the main point. Rockstar might not be 100% guaranteed to win Game of the Year. Like I said, Red Dead Redemption 2 lost out to God of War, a reboot of a beloved franchise that told a story of a father and a son on a journey to honor his mother, and the Game Award voters ate it up. That's another hurdle that Rockstar Games has dealt with. Their games carry a lot of controversy and stigma, often making them a whipping boy in the media, considered violent and crude games played by violent and crude gamers, and thus not necessarily thought of games of the caliber that tend to win Game of the Year. I mean, GTA is known for killing hookers and causing chaos and tons of other controversial things. What if voters are caught off guard by a new IP or a breakout gem of a game that is different than anything on the market or breaks the mold or pushes a genre of game to the absolute max changing the standard moving forward? One new issue floating around recently is people are concerned GTA 6 might be too similar to GTA 5. Now I think that's silly but if that's the general consensus at release that might just be the nail in the coffin for GTA 6's game of the year hopes. Look at Tears of the Kingdom, one of the biggest games, most creative mechanics, open world world freedom to do what you want, but it was considered too similar to the game that came before it, Breath of the Wild. When Baldur's Gate 3 swept through giving players tons of options and tackling a narrative driven world with a cast of incredibly likable characters, Tears of the Kingdom stood little to no chance. And the game of the year is Baldur's Gate 3.
I think Rockstar is also looking to appeal to a wider audience with GTA 6. The decision to have a female protagonist, developers noting that they aren't looking to punch down and make jokes about marginalized groups, and despite how you might feel about that, is probably for the best. In 2024, the world is a much different place, and jokes that flew back in the early 2000s really aren't acceptable these days. So with them looking to appeal to a wider audience, I think it also bodes well for their odds of winning Game of the Year, which makes me think even more it's likely a war they're looking to capture with GTA 6. The gaming industry is a fast-moving conveyor belt where great games are being buried by constant releases. I mean, I have games I've been wanting to get around to for years, so to stand out, you really have to bring some heat. The good news is I think GTA 6 is going to knock it out of the park, but that really is still to be seen. Rockstar has slowly but surely eaten through all of their goodwill with predatory microtransactions, unnecessary ports, annoying mechanics, terrible remasters, so they really need to hit it with this one. I mean, we just saw Bethesda release a huge open world RPG that was absolutely hated by fans. It wasn't too long ago that Bethesda was the golden boy of the gaming industry, but with years of pissing off fans and releasing underwhelming games, Almost heaven, West Virginia. they're now receiving more and more hate by the day. Goodwill and fan perception is a super valuable resource, and Bethesda is the poster child of what happens when it reaches damn near zero. I mean, we have people now doubting Bethesda's ability to tell stories and deliver a quality game in Elder Scrolls 6. If I told you that back in 2012, you'd think I was crazy. In the gaming world, your image can be changed in an instant, and for Rockstar, GTA 6 will be a monumental split in the road that could dictate a lot moving forward. I think GTA 6 is too big to fail myself, but anything is possible. And if Rockstar doesn't reach the ever-growing expectation of the fans, well, they'll tell you apart. <laughs> Just ask Bethesda. If your fans love you, they'll overlook bugs and glitches and a lot of things. But if they turn on you, your games will be dissected and any and all flaws will be brought forth. Without a doubt, Rockstar is the king of the open world genre. But with a 12 year wait, the fans are growing ever more impatient. And anything less than a masterpiece will be looked at with extreme distaste. I mean, Rockstar is already speaking about the damage review bombing has on games. So they're very aware of the tightrope that navigating public perception can be. They're likely very aware that there's a big section of the gaming population that are hoping to see them fail as they're likely fed up with what GTA has become. So it's time for Rockstar to bless us mortals on Earth once again and defend their throne. They have to fend off all of these pretenders that have no right to breathe the same air as GTA 6. They must sell a trillion copies, triumph every game that comes out in 2025, and win game of the year, or less, they'll be known as frauds. Or not, I don't fucking know. But what do you guys think? Is GTA 6 a lock for game of the year? What game are you most excited for in 2025? Leave a comment, leave a like if you like the vid, sub up, we're on the road to 1k. Peace.